What is up, my beautiful weird ones out there? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this Aquarius new moon video. We have a new moon in the sign of Aquarius and it is definitely a weird one. This one is definitely bringing like all the Aquarian weird energies with it. So strap up and prepare. This new moon in Aquarius looks a little bit like shocking, unexpected, random, just a lot of curveballs and unexpected serious new beginnings can happen at this time. It's kind of like a lot of social stuff coming up to somewhere in our lives and we're gonna talk about what it means for everybody. As as always in this video we talk about the new moon the new moon energy and then i also talk about what this new moon could be bringing for your sign towards the end but you want to make sure that you listen to this first part of the video because it gives kind of the foundation for the rest of what i talk about for the signs so just keep that in mind also the astrology of february video will be coming out either right before this video or right after with the February sign horoscopes as well. So I have a few videos coming out back to back, so make sure that you are subscribed with your notifications on and that you are on the lookout. If you're new here, my name is Tawny Michelle and I'm just a weird chick on the internet doing tarot and astrology videos and talking about cool spiritual shit and just really sharing my knowledge and my journey with you guys. I would really, really appreciate it if you guys could comment down below on this video and let me know what you think of what we talked about in this video and also if you could give this video a thumbs up it would really help me out and it would support me in this video also if you don't follow me on insta definitely do that i post like a lot on instagram i also do exclusive astrology content and other cool spiritual content over on my patreon on a weekly basis so definitely make sure to sign up for patreon if you would like to get more of a uncensored unfiltered version of me but also a lot of other cool exclusive shit that you cannot get here on this channel so anyways with all that good shit out of the way let's go ahead and talk about this aquarius new moon so we have the aquarius new moon happening on february 1st like literally the first day of february starting with a bang here this new moon is happening on february 1st it is a new moon which means the sun and the moon will be aligning in the sky in the sign of aquarius what's really interesting about this new moon in aquarius though is that it is basically only a few degrees away from Saturn. Big Daddy Saturn, as I like to call him. <laughs> Saturn is basically the taskmaster, right? Like Saturn deals with time, karma, responsibility, accountability, restrictions, heaviness, struggles. Saturn can deal with maturing and discipline, commitments, responsibility, and these types of things as well. So Saturn's not like the bad guy here, so to say. Saturn is just teaching us uh, the rougher lessons of life, which we would not be able to have the good lessons without some of these rougher lessons that we learn with Saturn. So with this new moon conjunct Saturn in Saturn's ruling sign of Aquarius, it's very interesting, right? So it's going to be a pretty wild, weird <laughs> new moon in the sign of Aquarius, right? Aquarius is an air sign, a fixed air sign, which deals with social issues. It deals with our ideas of how to progress progress socially. On the more macro level, it also deals with outsiders, black sheep, people that just don't fit in or people that just don't go along with the crowd. But it also deals with social issues in terms of going with the crowd and doing things the way that everybody else is doing. There can kind of be like this cloning effect or this like one size fits all shadow side to Aquarius where we are not making room for individuality. We're just going with everyone else or just doing what everyone else is doing. And so it brings up these types of issues. Now Aquarius as a sign can also deal with things that are just different from the usual or upgrading, progressing. It can also deal with discovery and science, experimentation, what it means to be human and humanity itself on a grander scale. It's about being a little bit more rational and logical about things instead of so mixed up in our feelings. It's very future focused and observant. And so 
With all that being said, we kind of have this energy with this new moon of a new beginning somewhere in our lives that really deals with how we are progressing or carrying things over from the lessons that we learned last month in Capricorn and how to progress on those ideas or these goals or these plans that we've been building. Now, what's also really interesting about this new moon is that it is basically in a square with Uranus. It is kind of like starting to pass the square. So it's not like completely exact anymore, but we're still gonna be feeling that wild curveball Uranian energy. And that's where I think this new moon could get crazy because we also have Mars and Capricorn trining Uranus as well. And if that sounds like a whole bunch of weird shit to you, don't worry, I'm gonna explain what that means. So basically my interpretation of this new moon is that we may be breaking free of something or trying to break free of something. There may be an energy of like breaking free or trying to get out of a heavier restrictive situation or doing something that even causes unexpected reactions. So with Saturn there right next to this new moon, this is a very serious, committed new beginning. This is like a new start that's like, okay, it's time to be serious or this may even be a situation that comes up that starts some kind of new serious beginning where we're having to take something more seriously or we're having to progress in a serious way or there's like an added sense of respect responsibility or limitation, but that somehow causes some kind of unexpected reaction or makes us feel out of control in some way, or it may even like shake things up in another area of our lives. And this new moon's also really highlighting this Saturn Uranus square that we've been dealing with all of last year in 2021. So this new moon is kind of shaking shit up. It's bringing a very sober and serious tone with it and kind of like a limiting or restrictive or large commitment or responsibility energy with it but at the same time it's also shaking shit up like this new beginning is also simultaneously causing like a chain reaction where it's shaking something up in another area of our lives this could also look like an unexpected new beginning that somehow adds like a layer of responsibility or obligation or that feels limiting in some way that we didn't see coming like out of nowhere this could also be like a tightening down of something but also because of that tightening down it brings up some kind of unexpected battle we could also experience with this new moon unexpected delays or setbacks there's also like this massive theme or pattern that i've noticed astrologically recently with time because saturn has been so activated over these last couple months so i really Feel like we could be experiencing things moving too quickly or too slowly or there could just be a lot of like confusion around time and we could also feel this intense push and pull between being on the outside versus being on the inside or we could feel like oh i need to just do what everybody else is doing like this one size fits all kind of thing that i was talking about instead of standing in our own unique expression and individuality because that may go against what something that we need to do in some way. We may be feeling limited and have to do what's best for the greater good or the long term instead of right now, even if that feels like it goes against what we feel. And it's been, it's kind of really hard for me to say that because I'm somebody that's like really, really big about authenticity, like Leo rising, aqua moon like i i have dealt with these lessons of this axis like my whole life but i just really feel like for some people it could show up that way where you kind of feel like you're boxed into a corner and you have to do something based on what's like good long term for everybody instead of what you actually want or you have to do something that somehow causes some kind of unexpected reaction that you weren't really trying to go for and it may shake things up you know what i mean it's kind of like you have to go with something even if that's going to shake something up or even if that's going to cause other people to react in like a, a vicious way or a volatile way or it's going to kind of cause an unknown reaction in another part of your life in some way. But yeah, I also feel like this new moon looks like some kind of reality check as well, where we could like literally be seeing something in a very real way that maybe we weren't before. So I feel like it's kind of coming to terms with these lessons, but at the same time, finding a way to make room 
for individuality. For some people, they could experience this in being the outsider or being the black sheep or being the outcast in a situation and that shaking things up because they don't fit in or because they aren't like they're standing in their individuality and they're saying, no, like, I'm not going to go with this. I'm not going to just ignore this. Like, and so that shakes things up or some people could experience it in a way where it's like, I have to do this because of X, Y, Z, and that could shake things up, you know? So it's kind of like being on the outside versus being on the inside and which one, you know? And it's kind of like, it, it's it's a really interesting energy. And like I said, people could experience it in different ways. It just really depends. But definitely let me know down below if any of you guys notice these themes. I think mostly this looks like a very unexpected, like kind of serious new beginning <laughs> in some kind of way where we're having to do something or start something or there's something that kind of just falls in our laps randomly that we weren't expecting. There could also be like more restrictions like imposed um, whether personally or in our personal lives or on like a larger scale in some way. It just really seems like there's something serious but also something unexpected and the two different energies are kind of in a battle with one another. So yeah, so that's the basis for this new moon in Aquarius and what I personally see with this. Definitely let me know down below if, like I said, if you see any of these themes, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about how this is going to affect your sign. As always, rising sign will resonate the most because I am doing these uh, based off of your rising sign. So do please keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and get into the signs. Alrighty, starting with you, Aquarius. New moon, new you, boo. <laughs> Except this new moon is a little bit of a serious one. This could be a time, Aquarius, where you are really reflecting on your long term, your commitments, boundaries in your life, limitations in your life, where you may be holding yourself back or where other situations are holding you back. This is definitely a kind of serious tone, like has a serious tone to it. And it, you may be really feeling like you're trying to get serious about something that you're starting, but it's causing some unexpected curveball chain reactions in terms of your home, your foundations, you know, um, your personal life in some way. It could be kind of uprooting things there or causing a little bit of an unexpected reaction. And so it's kind of a time where you are reflecting on what's good for you versus what's good for family, roots, home, foundation, personal life, etc. You may be feeling a little bit more detached around this new moon. You may be feeling a little bit more serious. This may be a time of really taking responsibility and accountability for your actions or for yourself. And this may cause you to act in a serious way that really kind of rebels or goes against, uh, you know, where you're from or your roots or your family, et cetera. Like it just really kind of may uproot some things. So just do be on the lookout for these types of energies. It definitely looks like an unexpected new beginning. There could also be maybe something happening at home or in your personal life that kind of sets the tone for this new beginning or that kind of like like simultaneously starts this new beginning for you where you're having to get serious about something or you're having to really examine who you are in a very serious way and what you want and what you're doing in a very serious way. So it is kind of a more serious energy <laughs> at the very first uh, few days of the month, but as we get throughout the month, it will lighten up a little bit and we talk about that in your, in your monthly horoscope. So if you haven't seen that yet, definitely go check it out if it's up by now. So. Uh, yeah, and with that being said, we are going to move on to Pisces. So for Pisces, this new moon is happening in your 12th house of that which is hidden, secluded, isolation. This could be a time, especially just like the first part of this month, the first week or so of this month, where you're feeling a little bit more isolated, you're feeling a little bit more secluded. Um, there's kind of like a serious tone or a sober and serious tone where maybe you're really reflecting on like your health, your habits, and what you need to do to kind of like take a break or 
like slow down for a minute and like really get back in in tune with yourself um, where you maybe need to get out of the spotlight or like kind of seclude yourself in a way where you can kind of like refresh and figure out what you're going to do next because it's just a time where it really seems like you may need some kind of break. You may need to really reflect on the things that may need to end in your life before you can move forward because your season is coming up next after Aquarius season. So that will be a time where it's like a new you is being reborn. But for now, it's like you have to get rid of the old. You have to let go of these old karmic cycles, these old karmic patterns. You know, time could be feeling very strange and very weird to you right now. You could be really like getting a lot of like insight on past battles or past struggles or past situations that have like really been holding you back or keeping you delayed. This new moon could also be shaking up things in terms of your environment, siblings, relatives, neighbors, your community, your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day routines, like something could kind of happen on a day-to-day -day basis that kind of makes you start reflecting on this or you reflecting on this could pull you out of certain day-to-day -day schedules that you've had or you needing to kind of take a break or go within, you know, could kind of mess up your day-to-day -day routines or schedules a little bit or, you know, your day-to-day -day plans, etc. And so, but I feel like it's really needed. You know, this could also be a time where you're starting to seriously see something that's holding you back in life and it's maybe time that you have to speak up about it or you feel like you can't speak up about it, like you need to be silent about it because it may cause like a shit storm by you saying something. And so those are some of the ways you guys could see this playing out as a Pisces rising. Definitely let me know down below if any of that ends up relating and we are gonna move on to Aries. So Aries, this new moon is happening for you in your 11th house of your social interactions friend groups, your ambitions, networking, etc. And so this could definitely be a time where you are seeing a lot of social energy, social media, networking, making different connections or like meeting different people, different acquaintances, like-minded people. All of that could be really kind of coming to the forefront for this new moon where there is some kind of serious tone or serious new beginning that's happening that may somehow shake things up in terms of your finances, resources, what you want, your values, like what's important to you or what you keep close to you. This could also be a time where you're seriously thinking about doing something, like you have this a serious ambition and you're like, should I, pull the, should I pull the switch on this or not? Like, should I do this or not, basically? And how that may be some kind of risk in terms of money, finances, resources, what you own, things like that. And so this could be a time where you're really examining seriously the risk that you may need to take in a certain situation, either involving friends, your social life, or ambitions in some way, or certain connections with people in your life. This could also be a new moon where maybe you're seeing the reality of a situation that causes some kind of new beginning or causes some kind of like accountability or serious new insight on certain people in your life or certain connections in your life. So definitely let me know down below, Aries, if that is your reading, if that resonates, I'd really love to hear about it. And uh, let's move on to Taurus. So for Taurus, this new moon is happening in your 10th house sector of career, your future goals, your future achievements, you know, or just your achievements in general, the legacy that you wanna leave behind, authority figures, etc. This could be a new moon really bringing those things up where there's some kind of new serious beginning that's starting here where you're getting like a major reality check on your life, what you want out of life, where you're going, what you want in terms of career, what you want in terms of notoriety, what you want in terms of moving up the ladder, or you could be getting, this could be some kind of new beginning related to authority figures in your life. There could be some kind of new beginning relating to authority or the people that you look up to or respect. This could be a very serious, sobering new beginning in that area in some way, something that's like unexpected. This could also be for some Torians, like some fears or like feeling a little bit on like on the outside or like an outcast in your career in some way. And that's somehow shaking things up in terms of you. Like you may be doing something that opposes like an authority figure, like like your boss or something in your career, right? Um, or uh, an institution or a company or whatever. 
and you kind of being on the outside and being like, you know, and having to take that stance, even though um, it may shake things up, you know what I mean? Something like that. That's just one example of how this could play out. But there's definitely like a push and pull here. This this particular new moon may be a little bit more difficult for you if you're a Taurus rising because it's really forcing you to slow down, reflect, maybe like take a break or maybe you're feeling delayed. And it's also pushing you to do something a little bit out of your comfort zone. It's also making you feel like you want to express your individuality or express your authenticity or um, stand in your truth or something like that. And so there's kind of this push and pull between you and what's good for you and what you want and the things that you want to start versus career authority figures the hierarchy, where you're trying to go, your future, et cetera. Definitely some serious questions coming up with that here or definitely some serious trains of thought coming up with that here. Let me know down below if that ends up resonating, Taurus. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback, especially for this new moon to see how it's affecting you guys and how this energy uh, is playing out in your life if you see it. So anyway, so moving on to Gemini. So for Gemini, this new moon is happening in the ninth house of your belief systems, your worldviews and education, travel, you know, what you believe in terms of politics, religion, you know, things like this, these things that shape our worldviews or experiences that we have that change our worldview. So this could be a time where you are seriously reflecting on how you're thinking about things and your belief systems, your worldviews, educational pursuits, etc. This could also be a time where maybe you're like, you know, thinking about that in the greater scheme of something or in the in the greater good of something. Maybe you're thinking like, maybe you're feeling a little bit on the outside in terms of what you think or your beliefs or something like that. Or maybe you're feeling a little bit on the inside and you're not understanding how other people don't think like you or something like that. So, but it's definitely shaking something up in terms of you know, your belief systems. It is definitely bringing in a possible struggle in terms of even subconscious like belief systems, behaviors, and reactions. And so this is definitely kind of putting in this like push and pull between wanting to maybe be free of something and liberated and secluded from something versus being in the middle of something or participating in something and taking accountability or responsibility with something. Now this new moon being in your ninth house could also bring in things of like law, legalities. So that could be another way that this is playing out, but you could be feeling kind of alienated in terms of some kind of belief system or some kind of worldview, um, whether it's others, other people's or your own. And so, yeah, definitely let me know, Gemini, how that's playing out for you. I'd really love to hear about it down below. And we are going to move on to Cancer. So for Cancer, this new moon's happening in your eighth house of money, shared money, shared finances, your financial affairs, transactional relationships with other people, any kind of energy exchange that happens, whether it's finances, resources, or just even like, you know, intimate relationships. This is definitely being ruled by this. And so this new moon is bringing up those things for you. This could be a time where you are, there's some kind of new financial obligation coming in or new financial responsibility coming in, or you're feeling a little bit limit, limited in terms of your financial obligations or financial affairs or investments or et cetera. Like there's definitely a massive unexpected but serious new beginning coming in here to do with your financial affairs or your partner's finances, other people's money, possibly even like inheritances, debt, investments, all of these financial things that are bigger than just your income, right? That are really coming to the surface here. And this could be somehow shaking up your ambitions or what you want for your future or your social life in some way. This could have some kind of backlash or something like that happening within your social life or even in a relationship in your life. So those are some of the things that you can notice. There's kind of this push and pull between uh, what you want, your ambitions, um, networking, organizations, uh, things like that versus your finances, taxes, financial affairs, et cetera, or your partner's money or something like that. But there's definitely something more serious coming to the forefront here. Um, something that you're maybe needing to take responsibility for or something that you're needing to just at least get serious about and commit to. And so, but it could cause some kind of chain reaction or it could disrupt 
other plans that you had in the long run of like what you wanted to gain or what you wanted to get back from it, you know, something like that. So I'd really love to hear your feedback, Cancer, on how this ends up playing out for you guys down below. If you're a Cancer rising, please let me know. And we are going to move on to Leo. So for Leo, this new moon is happening in your seventh house of partnerships, relationships, marriage, and just really significant relationships in your life. This new moon is a kind of serious, sobering beginning to do with relationships. What do you see in terms of your future with the person that you're with or with the significant people in your life? You're kind of getting serious in terms of your partnerships and the people that you have in your life, you know, like and where you need to set boundaries or where there needs to be some maturing on one of your ends, you know, whether it's you or the person that you're with. Um, if you can see yourself with this person long term, what the goal is here, what what's going on. So there may be some kind of serious energies coming in or some kind of sobering or maturing energies coming in with this one for Leos. You may be learning a lot of like really valuable and big lessons in relationships. This may bring up the topic of commitments, you know. Is this something that is you know, is committed for the long term? Is this going to work out long term? Or is this going to disrupt your plans or your partner's plans for your future, your career, your professional life or theirs? You know, is this going to disrupt what you have in mind for what you want out of life or your dis your direction? And so those could be some things kind of coming up. Either way, there's some kind of push and pull between your professional life, your career, your future, your achievements, your goals, authority figures, versus your significant relationships in your life and how you show up in the world. This could also be on the other end, like your partner, like maybe they're going through a more sober or serious like situation, or maybe they're like thinking more long-term or maybe they're, you know, feeling a little bit more detached or distant in some way. And so these could be some other ways that it plays out. But I'd really love to hear your guys' feedback, Leo, um, down below. I'm a Leo rising as well, so I'm interested to see how this is gonna play out for us. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say down below and if you see these energies playing out for you this coming week. So anyways, moving on to Virgo. So for Virgo, this new moon is happening in your sixth house. So, and it's happening on Saturn, like I said in the beginning. So this is kind of a sober and serious time to do with your health, your day-to-day -day maintenance of yourself, how you care for yourself on a day-to-day -day basis and also your work and the things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to get by. And so this is really bringing those things up and into question. Where do you need to take responsibility, accountability, or get more serious or commit to something more serious in terms of these things? Where do you need to get your shit together regarding health, work, your day-to-day -day routines, etc.? And so those are the big things that are coming up here. The issue is, is that this may be causing some kind of disruption, backlash, or unexpected reactions in terms of your belief systems or how you see the world, your worldviews, you know, and how you feel about how you feel about certain things or how you see certain things, your perspective on certain things. This could be definitely a time where it's kind of like may have you questioning your belief systems a little bit because somehow they may be interacting with your day-to-day -day schedules or your health or something that you're learning or something that you're, you know, doing in terms of these ninth house themes with Uranus and your ninth of, you know, your belief systems, your, your higher views, your political views, your religious views, you know, any kind of views that really shape the way that you look at life and the outlook that you have on life. And so basically your outlook is somehow in some kind of struggle with these new serious and sober energies coming in with health and work in some way. Maybe you have a meeting with work people and they say something that you strongly disagree with and you're kind of like, okay, do I start something or should I just keep my mouth shut? Like, this is really going against my values and what I find, you know, acceptable and so I feel like I really need to stick out here or do I just not say anything and just, you know, fit in, you know, that, that kind of thing. That's just one example of how it could play out. But um, yeah, so that's basically what I'm seeing. There's kind of this push and pull between health, work, daily routine versus your outlook, your belief systems, your worldviews, etc. The ninth house can also be law and reality. So that could be another thing that some of you may notice coming up with this. But um, yeah, so definitely let me know down below, Virgo, how that ends up playing out for you, how you guys notice this new moon coming up. I'd love to hear about it. 
and we are gonna move on to Libra. So for Libra, this new moon is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, sexuality, creativity, artistry, children, and those types of topics, dating. So you may notice some serious uh, energies coming in with those kind of topics. Like, are you ready to commit to something that you love? Or are you ready to commit to this person you're dating? Or are they ready to commit to you? Are you ready to take accountability for some kind of you know, situation to do with your child if you're a parent, you know what I mean? Like, are you questioning uh, the, you know, societal standards on discipline or something like that? You know, I'm just bringing random shit up, but that could could somehow play out here. But um, are you getting serious about wanting to have a child or not wanting to have a child? You know, like something like that. Like, it, it definitely is bringing up a flavor of responsibility, commitment, accountability in terms of these fifth house themes of fun, romance, dating, children, uh, what you find passion in, what you do for joy. But this somehow may be disrupting financial affairs in some way. Some of you guys could be going through like a custody battle or a divorce or a, you know, um, child support issue or something like that with the fifth and the eighth house. Or it could just be like you really want to get serious about doing something that you love to do, but it may you may have to take some risk financially to do it and it may disrupt some things financially so that's another way that it could play out but either way there's these two energies of like i said what you love joy children dating versus your financial affairs investments debt you know um inheritance etc so those are the energies that you could really see playing out with this new moon in Aquarius. Definitely let me know down below though, Libra. Uh, if you do see these energies, I'd really, really love to know and hear your feedback and what you do see, even if you don't particular see these, particularly see these energies right away. So let's move on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, this new moon's happening in your fourth house of home, family, your private life, your personal life, your roots. Uh, what you do behind closed doors and who you are behind closed doors. And so this new moon happening on Saturn could be bringing up kind of a serious tone or some serious long-term questions in terms of those things, your home, your private life, your family, your living situation, your past um, as well, your childhood, your parents. There could be, this new moon could be bringing in a certain level of like responsibility or accountability um, as well with it where maybe there's some kind of unexpected new beginning, you know, in terms of home and family. Um, this could somehow disrupt though your relationships in some way, your relationships with your partner or your relationship, uh, you know, just significant relationships in your life, a business partnership, et cetera, because it is kind of like gonna be in a square with Uranus and your seventh and so, this definitely can cause some disruptions in your relations and there can be kind of this struggle between your personal life, your private life, your home, your family, your foundation versus your relationships in some way. You know, you're getting kind of serious or there's kind of a large serious focus happening here in your personal life or with family in general and somehow that may cause some kind of disruption or chain reaction in your partner um, or in a significant relationship again. Uh, one way that this could play out is that, like, I don't know, maybe you and your partner live together, but your parents, you know, for whatever reason, need to stay with you for a little bit, right? Or um, you have to go and take care of a parent or a family member or your partner's family member has to come stay with you. And so that causes this kind of disruption between you and your partner or like a slight shakeup for a little bit. But it's like this... This sun, this new moon conjunct Saturn, it's kind of like something that you may like really feel or know that you need to do, even if it's hard, even if it causes disruption. And so, um, so that's kind of the issue here where it's like, even if it is gonna cause disruption, you're kind of like, I know I have to do this, like karmically, I feel it for some reason. And so that could be the energy. Um, but yeah, those are some of the ways you could notice this playing out. But either way, there may be kind of this push and pull between your private life, your home life, your family, versus your relationships in some way. So definitely let me know down below, Scorpio, uh, what you do notice coming up, if you do notice any of those things, or just what you notice, even if you don't, I'd really love to hear your feedback. And let's go ahead and move on to Sag. So 
for Sagittarius, this new moon is happening in your third house of just a lot of weird day-to-day -day shit, like <laughs> communications on a day-to-day -day basis, your neighborhood, your community, siblings, relatives, cousins, like, you know, the people, places, and things that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, your day-to-day -day schedules. It also can rule things like your skill set and short travels and transportation. Um, so with the new moon here with Saturn, there could be kind of like maybe a serious tone in your day-to-day -day kind of schedules for some reason or another, or some kind of added responsibility, or you could be feeling a little bit like overwhelmed or busy around this new moon, or there's some kind of added responsibility that you just added to your schedule that is kind of like somehow, you know, making you feel a little bit more heavier, or serious around this time. There could be something that you're working on or doing on a day-to-day -day basis that's like really serious or taking up a lot of your focus. Or there could be something serious that you need to talk about or communicate in some way, you know, or something serious, restrictive, or limiting going on in your community or your environment in some way as well, like some kind of rules being established or mandates or something like that. But this new moon on Saturn is squaring Uranus in the sixth, so somehow this disrupts your day-to-day -day routines, obviously, um, possibly your health routines or possibly your work routines, you know, something like that. It's like um, maybe there's some kind of delay or setback um, in your environment or in your reality that somehow causes a disruption or a chain reaction or a curveball to happen in your work or day-to-day -day routines, et cetera. And so those are some of the ways that you could be seeing this play out. But either way, um, it, it's kind of like a serious tone, you know? Like I, I said that a lot in the beginning, this new moon on Saturn is kind of like, okay, hey, um, we need to get serious about what we're doing, even if that is going to disrupt something in our work schedule or routines because this has to be done you know and so this new moon is is really kind of bringing in a possibly a big commitment with it or an unexpected serious new beginning so that's what i'm seeing for you sag let me know down below if that ends up resonating i'd love to hear your feedback on this and what you notice coming up around this time but um we are going to move on to Capricorn. So for Capricorn, this new moon is happening in your second house of money, resources, finances, and what you own or, you know, what, what kind of values you have, what's important to you, what supports you, these kinds of things. And so also your priorities, you know, what are your priorities, which also is kind of like what's important to you, you know? So this new moon here could be bringing up a really serious vibe about these things, you know? Where do you need to get serious about your finances? Where do you need to get serious about your priorities, your resources, et cetera? This could be a time where you're maybe feeling a little delayed or set back in terms of finances or where, um, you know, you could be making a big financial commitment that could somehow cause some kind of backlash or shake up with something that you enjoy or uh, something that you love, your dating life, if you are in the dating world, um, or your children in some way. There could be some kind of push and pull here between your children, lo love life, sexuality, what, what brings you joy, uh, your dating life versus money, resources, finances, priorities. And so it's kind of like, you know, you're getting serious about your priorities, but that may piss some people off or that may disrupt some other areas of your life uh, that you don't really have control over, you know, but it's like, okay, I have to do this or I have to make this decision or I have to make this commitment or it's time to start saving or whatever. I can't keep like blowing my money on shit that's like fun and this, that and the other, like something like that. Like it's, it's definitely bringing up kind of like a serious tone to do with money, resources, finances and what you own and uh, your priorities. And so those are some of the things you could notice. Could be a kind of an unexpected new financial responsibility or an unexpected new beginning that is kind of serious in terms of your priorities or what you're responsible for or what, you know, some kind of obligation or even limit, limitation for some. So definitely let me know down below Capricorn how you do end up seeing this new moon play out in your life. I'd really love to hear about it and hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. That is all the signs now. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my other videos this month. Bye.